So these were the experiments that we did. Now let's have a look at the results. So we had the consumer study, and we asked the consumers to, um, to describe the strength of the coffee. So what you see here on the y-axis is um, the perception. So it's either uh, just right, or it's too strong, or it's not strong enough. And you see below the coffees with no crema up to the largest amount of crema. So the consumers that were only visually observing the coffee, they judged the coffee without crema as being less strong than the other coffees. Now, when we blindfolded them and they only had in-mouth information, all the coffees were exactly the same. And we knew this from the, sensory, from the monadic profiling. Now, what happened when they were standard, when they were doing the standard tasting? Again, the coffee that did not have any crema was judged as less strong than the coffees that did have crema. So the visual information that they expected the coffee be less strong, it actually uh, went through to the overall tasting, and the coffee was perceived as less strong because it didn't have any crema. So then we asked them about the smoothness of the coffee. So the consumers that were just visually observing the coffee, again, they didn't expect the coffee to be very smooth, the one without crema, while the coffees that did have crema were all perceived as more or less the same smoothness. So when we, asked, when we did the blind tasting, the smoothness is increasing with the amount of crema. So it's a textural aspect, so it perfect, makes perfect sense that the crema enhances the texture and the smoothness of the coffee. So what happened when we did blind uh, the standard tasting? It's actually the visual information is dominating the overall experience. The coffee that does not have any crema is judged as less smooth, while the one with just a small amount of crema is judged as smoother than it is in reality. So this way, we actually could see that the visual information from the crema, it impacts the overall sensory experience. Now let's look at the smell of coffee. And you might have read or heard that the crema is a, acts as a cover that prevents aromas from escaping. And what we show is actually just the opposite, that the crema helps to release aromas above the cup. So at the first moments after extraction, you see that the red line, which is the coffee with crema, is above the, the line, which is white, where we have removed the crema. So uh, we, hear, we only have two coffees here. It's with and without crema. And on the y-axis, you see the um, one aroma marker and the intensity of this aroma marker. And on the x-axis, you see the function of time. So you see that the, at the first moments after extraction, the coffee with crema actually has a higher am amount of aroma above the, above the cup than the white line. Uh, at longer times, however, the coffee with crema is below the line, white line, which is the coffee without crema. So here, indeed, the crema acts as a lid that prevents the aromas from escaping. However, it's an espresso coffee, it's 40 milliliters. And after three minutes, you have your consumed your coffee, so it's not really relevant. Um, the last couple of years, we have worked on the development of a new extraction system that makes long cup coffee with crema. And we wanted to make sure that this long cup coffee with crema also enhances the above cup aroma release. So you see here, it's the same aroma marker uh, that we measured. And again, at short moments after extraction, you see even an amplified effect from the small cup. There's really an increased amount of aroma above the cup. Um, and the first moments after extraction. So again, this coffee helps to, in, with the crema here, it helps to release aromas above the cup. And I do not have any uh, data on it, but when you do the experiment yourself and you smell the two, for, two different coffees, it's really quite uh, amazing the difference that, that the crema brings to the cup. Um, so now let's look at the in-mouth information. So, uh, remember that we have only one coffee. Monadic sensory profiling, the coffees are all the same. So what happens when the consumer, when the, the panelist is tasting the coffee over seven sips? And we have sim simplified the um, attributes. So we have ro roasted, carbony, and bitterness. Um, so what happens throughout the cup when we're increasing the amount of crema? So when we have no no crema, we have an, a dominance of mainly carbony, a bit of bitterness. 
the roasted note is much lower in dominance. When we're increasing the amount of crema, the red line, so the roasted note, is moving up. It's moving up even further, and when we have the largest amount of crema, the roasted note is actually dominant throughout the cup. So we see that the crema, indeed, again, enhances the perception of the aromas when you're consuming your cup. Now, we wanted to confirm this with the analytical method. So remember Philippe that had a little nose tubes. And um, what we saw here, and you have to just be aware that it's the same coffee. There is an inter-individual difference between the uh, panelists. So when they're consuming the coffee, it's not exactly the same. So we did not expect very big differences here. We do, however, see two groups. We have on the y-axis the sum of certain aroma compounds, and on the x-axis it's the number of sips. We see two groups. The coffees without crema and with a very small amount of crema, they are below the coffees that do have a larger amount of crema. So again, again, with crema, we see enhanced release of aromas into the nose space when we're drinking the coffee. So this is confirming what we saw with the, um, the TDS, that the perceived ro uh, roasted note, it can actually be measured in terms of uh, high volatile aroma compounds in the nose space. So what does this mean for the consumer? We did not want to study the consumer preference. We wanted to understand how the crema impacts the appreciation of the consumer. Uh, so we saw, first with the consumer study, that the crema impacts the visual uh, information and that this impacts the expectation of the coffee. So the visual cues are very important. We also saw that the crema enhances the aroma release above the cup and in the nose space. And you would ask your question, why would this uh, make a difference? What, what does the crema really do? So I just want to show you a little movie again, same as before, but we're moving into the cup. We're starting to hear the bubbles that are exploding. So what happens when you extract your coffee is that you have a higher amount of aroma vol volatiles that are encapsulated into the little bubbles. So each time when a bubble is breaking, the aromas are escaping from the cup. So the molecules are coming out and you're actually having an enhanced perception of the aromas above the cup. So I hope I've been able to illustrate to you that taking a scientific approach to better understand a traditional sensory uh, methodology can actually help to better understand the consumer appreciation and also to create new value in coffee. We have used this study, the information from this study, in our communications to our consumers. We talk about the crema not only in visuals, but only how it impacts the sensory experience. But it also gave us confidence when we were developing a new uh, product, long cup coffee with crema, that there is a really enhanced benefit of having this crema on the long cup as well. Such a study is, of course, done through the collaboration of many different people. So here we work together uh, between the headquarters of Nespresso together with the Nestle Research Center. And I'd like to thank all my colleagues that contributed to this work. Thank you.